So what's this cross all about, man? This is the finale, man. Part five. Part five, man. We keep getting this cross business. So as we talk about the cross, let's bring it on home back to the Picto Paleo. This is the code, man. This is the original code. This is always going to bring you, man, back to the water, right? Back to the earliest that we can get, man. Ancient Semitic. Ancient Hebrew. We're talking the Ha and the Wa. <laughs> Not a man with arms raised. That's the hijack. It's your big mama. It's mama giving you the breath and the revelation. It's papa. It's the framer and the shaper, right? Papa gives you the added, right? Security. The hook, the tent peg, because this is going into Mother Earth, right? The tent peg. You know, holding down the tent, the foundation is going into Mother Earth, right? It's masculine. This is feminine. Every inhale you take is a <gasps> breath, is a <gasps> right? <laughs> Follow me now. So every breath you take is a <gasps> inhale. That's your mama. <gasps> you got a breath of revelation, right? Because you just finished, you know what I'm saying? The strong power, this L, the strong power. Just finished going into the family or your house or your body. Now you got a floor plan. Now you got a plan, the bot. Now you got the gom, right? The gamo gathering. Now we gathering. Now we tribing up, right? Then you go through a door together. Then we go, we move through an entrance together, right? Uh-oh, and then we got the breath. As soon as we get through the door, mama gives us the breath. The <gasps> inhale, exhale. Wow! Now we got the security, the, the sound, the vibration, the shaper. Then we get our Zion. Then we get our Zion. Then we get our food, our cut off nourishment, my naga. And once we get to the end, we have a towel. Two cross sticks is indigenous, is Hebrew paleo picto. And then we get the what? Mark sign. So their black Christ is trying to hijack our mark, hijack our sign, hijack our signal, my naga. Our two cross sticks is the OG cross. And there you got the Andrews cross or the what? The towel holding it down, right? Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Thou shall have no other gods before me. So all we talking about, and you know, this is part five, man. This just to make a simple point let's keep it real simple for the dismount no other powers my noggin no other powers to go through no other powers to communicate to your creator no other powers to praise beside or or next to or before our power and definitely thou shalt not make no graven images man and this image has become you know what we're really hanging on to because it's been stealing the indigenous indigenous identity it has been clearly conveying the indigenous identity but what came first one is the real and the other is a reflection the crucifixion therefore should be understood as a reflection and christianized reedification so our hebrew brothers tell us today you got to go through christ they are a Christianized reedification of the drama of the Spanish conquest. And it wasn't until the Spanish conquest to find the Amaru Khan, Copper Color Naga already here, did this reflection get created. You got it backwards. Because then what happened? First indigenous people, later mixed races symbol symbolically reappropriated the same image so today we see this other images of Yahweh Shai right now he's a super nigga with a super he got a cape on he got blazing eyes he got a big afro right because now you have officially symbolically reappropriated the same image making black Christ your own what's rule number one What's rule number one? Because my naga, we can keep it real simple when we talk about the creator of the green earth. 
and the creator of the blue sky. These are titles for the divine couple Ex Munkane and Ex Piakok. Jimenez translated their quiche names. Remember, this is the root name Alam and Kajalam. So, Mama is Alam. Sounds like Allah, right? Oh, yeah. Because over there they have the mother, and they have a, a reflection of phantom mother, and Christianity has a phantom father. You got your father by himself in Christianity, right? All by himself. Where is his connection with wisdom? Simply mother and father. A more accurate translation for Alam, however, is she who has born children from the perfect aspect of the root verb Al. <laughs> Now we got Allah, right? To bear children. That's a reflection of the mother. They split half in Islam and half in Christianity. And we're putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. We're putting the frame and the shape of back. The name of the male god Kajalam specifically indicates his begotten male offspring. Thus he who has begotten sons. Fray Bartolomo La Casas wrote in the 17th century that the people of Guatemala worshipped as their principal power the great father and the great mother. This is the Ha and this is the Wa, Managa, who were in heaven, right? We're talking about a divine couple. Who is wisdom to you? Who is Solomon praying for when he's asking for wisdom? Who's he asking for? He's asking for Mama. Solomon's going to the to our creator, right? He's going to the shaper to ask for more of that, for more of that breath from mama, right? Mama, ha, wa. And it gets real simple. We're gonna get a little, we're gonna get a little bonus, you know, part six, just dealing with the name, but let's go. So question, question. Do the Latter-day Saints believe Kitsukoto was actually Isus, right? <laughs> All right, let's just see what they're saying, man. This is off the fairmormon.org. Whether Kitsukoto can tell us anything about the Book of Mormon remains unproven. Now, it is claimed that LDS scholars believe that Kitsukoto was Jesus Christ. However, since Kitsukoto's association with a feathered serpent constitutes snake worship, <laughs> so they're trying to spin out this thing because we're talking about a dragon, the rainbow dragon, right? But they don't want to associate the dragon with their Jesus, right? Because that's, that's really the snake, right? That's really the fox. <laughs> Come on, man. We're talking sinus of fathers. Let's go. Some Christians claim that this association is therefore inconsistent with the worship of Jesus Christ because they are for sure worshiping. What's rule number one? What's rule number one? LDS authors have seen Christian parallels. Oh, but they do see parallels to kids of Kodal. At least some of these parallels were probably imposed, however, by the secondary sources who also saw the Christian connection to the native myth. The Christian connection to the native myth is that they found us here and they made a reflection and created a religion out of our culture. Kitsukoto plays a minor, if any, role. Okay, let's see. Critics should not, however, act as if the association of a snake with Christ is completely foreign or strange. Uh-oh. So this dragon, they keep saying snake, but we're talking serpent, right? Dragon is completely what? Foreign or strange? That's what they're acting like. Certainly the brass serpent or the copper dragon, because it was a copper dragon in Numbers 21, not a brass serpent, placed on a pole and raised up by Moshe has symbolic links to Jesus, right? Jesus. And these are these uh, qualities, these parallels. Oh, he was the creator of life. Okay, he gave life. Kitsukoto taught virtue, was the greatest lord of all. Okay, we're talking Mashiach. Kitsukoto had a long beard and features of a... Come on, man. Here, <laughs> dodge the hijack. Mesoamericans believe Kitsukoto would return. Okay, let's go deeper. Because in the book of the beginnings, you got the old red land was the name of the original home in the north from the Toltecs migrated. From which the Toltecs, when you talk Kitsukoto, you're talking about their leader, a Toltec leader. You're talking Tapu Zin, man. Because this Makir Amarik was the grandfather of Tapu Zin, Israel the seventh, who's the priest of Kitsukoto, who left Kalula for Rhoda in about when? 
1,000 by knocking.